Hi guys, welcome back to Jedi Fallen Order. We will be doing some more reading of data entries, starting this time with uh, the entries for the planet Kashyyyk. Uh, the first category is flora and fauna. As usual. Entry number one. Tack, I suppose. The Tack is a tree dwelling primate native to the planet Kashyyyk. These friendly creatures can often be found on the ground searching for overripe fruits. estimated that at least 15% of Kashyyyk's forests are covered in wee shock webs. <sighs> so many names to butcher. But I do my best. The threat of wee shocks is so common that Wookiee children are taught to defend themselves against the spiders from as young as three years old. Shock attack. Imperial 
while stormtroopers were dispatched to fend off incoming attacks from local wildlife. They encountered fiercer resistance than they were prepared for. Number 3. Poisoned Wookiee This Wookiee died from toxic poisoning. One of the many side effects from the refining process. The Empire is slowly destroying everything on this planet. Number 4. A Slave Caller A broken slave caller. The Wookiee who wore it ripped the collar apart with joy and anger to signify their freedom. Number 5. Wookiee Oppression Imperial stormtroopers have no regard for Wookiee lives. They see this planet and its inhabitants only as a resource to exploit. Number 6. Refinery Cells This refinery was designed only with yield in mind, no thought given to the comfort or safety of the incarcerated. Wookiee workers are chained together with no privacy, often covered in mud or dangerous industrial byproducts. Number 7. Wookiee Witness Macro binoculars used by a Wookiee as they watched the Empire enslave their people, keeping them prisoners on their own home. Number 8. Sap Barrels A barrel is refined Rosher sap. Its refinement process draws out impurities to distill a volatile chemical. The compound is utilized by the Empire in ways that are currently not understood. For every barrel of sap refined, over 200 tons of industrial waste are pumped into nearby waterways, slowly poisoning the planet. Number 9. Patrol Station This station was abandoned. Imperial patrols used it as a checkpoint. It must have been overrun at some point by dangerous animals in the area. Number 10. Wookiees in Hiding A Wookiee helmet left behind in a hideout used by their warriors. And lastly, number 11, refinery expansion. As the Empire expands its control over Kashyyyk, it sets its sights, no, it sets its sights on the Shadowlands. Small typo there. Next category is called Insurgent Activity, with entry number one, Saw's Ambush. This trooper was ruthlessly killed by Saw Guerrero. Remind me not to get on his bad side. Number two, Rescue. The retreating partisans were ultimately risen. The retreating partisans were ultimately rescued from Imperial forces by the Wookiee chieftain Tarful. Number 3. The Battle of Kashyyyk Remnants of B-1 battle droids who stormed Kashyyyk for the Separatists during the Clone Wars during the battle, the Separatists were defeated, the Republic became the Empire, and the Clone Wars came to a bitter end. Number 4. Partisan Retreat The partisans
citizens were forced to flee. The Empire drove them back into the Shadowlands. I hope they made it. Number five, breaking point. Saw and Mari were arguing about the mission. Mari wanted to help the Wookiees, but Saw seemed to think it was too risky. He's probably long gone by now. Number six, partisans ambushed. The partisans were pinned down here. They were eventually overrun and had to retreat. They suffered heavy casualties. Number seven, weapon cache. These specialized Imperial flamethrowers have been modified to more effectively incinerate Kashyyyk's wildlife. And lastly, number eight, Imperial trackers. A squad tracking the partisans and Wookiees. They are coming for Tarful. category for Kashyyyk called Wookiee Culture. Number one, Wookiee Home. Wookiee villages once dotted the Shadowlands, peacefully coexisting with the natural environment. Reverence for the raw shears is an, is an integral part of Wookiee's light touch architecture. metals and stones. The intricacy of the design suggests it was owned by a Wookiee of great importance. Number three, Sacred Shadowlands. An area sacred to the Wookiees, a sanctuary, one of the last safe zones from the Empire until now. spiritual connection. There was a special connection between the Wookiees and their forest. Number five, Wookiee mourning ritual. The Wookiees mourned the loss of someone close to them here, an elder known for their wisdom. Number six, the last Shio bird. This bird may be the last of its kind. The others are long gone. Number seven, Wookiee Rite of Passage. Wookiee warriors scaled this tree to great heights as a rite of passage. Number eight, Sacred Tree. It is more than a tree. It's a sacred source for the planet. It gave the Wookiees guidance. Number nine, Tarful and Cordova. Old friends met here, the Jedi Eno Cordova and Wookiee chieftain Tarful. They shared a great respect for each other. And lastly, number 10, Kashyyyk Wildlife, a trooper helmet, the remains of a stormtrooper whose body was dragged up here by Kashyyyk Wildlife. And that is everything for Kashyyyk.
detritus grows in dry, rocky areas. Air is filtered through its filaments, which trap dust and bacteria. Once filtered, the filaments contract to lock clean air inside, creating a humid environment where the hydratus can absorb the small amount of water it needs to survive. Number two, mushlings. Mushlings are an essential ingredient in the ink night sisters and night brothers use for their tattoos. The mushlings pods are boiled down until they become a thick yellowish paste. From there, clay, ash or other pigments are mixed in to create a variety of colors. Number three. The layer of the nidak. Nidak, again, I don't know. The lesser nidak is a feared opponent for night brothers. Though legends say some night sisters kept them as familiars. Nidaks are solitary creatures, rarely seen in packs after adolescence. Their only natural predator is the massive Gorgara. Number four, spider domestication. Night Brothers only recently began efforts to domesticate the Bane back spider. Without the Night Sisters' magical anti-venoms, the task has occasionally proven deadly. However, if a spider is captured young and raised alongside a Night Brother, it will bond with him and become a lasting companion. Number five, fire lichen. Fire lichen grows naturally in the dry climate of Tathamir. Its bright red color comes from the absorption of sulfur and other dust particles in the air. The Tathamirian variety is so resilient it's nearly impossible to rip from the rock. Number six, Brula fruit. Brula fruit was a common reagent in Night Sister potions. In small doses, its nectar could act as an antivenom to the bites of Dathomir's many poisonous snakes. Overconsumption, however, resulted in symptoms of swamp madness, convulsions, blurred vision, and hallucinations. And number seven, bleeding gut. Unlike other Dathomirian fungi, the bleeding gut does not reproduce using spores. Instead, their cells divide spontaneously, gradually forming small pods, which burst open when fully matured. Some varieties have been known to grow extra stalks. Cool stuff. Uh, the next category, the Knight Brothers. arena. Night brothers fought in this ruined arena to demonstrate their strength. Winning meant honor, respect, and power over the weak. Number two, the pit. Night brothers were thrown into a pit, killed by beasts, no doubt to set an example. Number three, Rite of Passage. The boldest Night Brothers ventured into the lair of this creature as a rite of passage. Those who survived were deemed worthy. And number four, Dathomirian Glyphs. Night Brothers paint glyphs using 
acid from the hydratus. Rather than staining the surface, the acid burns into even the hardest rock faces, leaving permanent marks. Each symbol must be carefully drawn both to preserve accuracy and avoid damage to oneself. Master calligraphers are rare and extremely valued for their talents. And number five, ominous effigy. No data found. Appearance suggests nothing good. <laughs> it's kind of funny.
Knight brothers brought an intruder here, but they were awaiting instructions. Number five, interlopers. Someone became involved with the affairs of the Knight brothers, and they were not welcome. Number six, the chase. The Knight brothers were chasing someone through the swamps, someone they feared. Number seven, the prisoner. The Knight brothers found someone dangerous, an outsider. Whoever it was, they took them to their leader. Number eight, power struggle. Whoever the outsider was, he killed the leader of the Knight Brothers. Number nine, submission. A new leader came to control the Knight Brothers, a powerful stranger. Number ten, the outsider. An outsider was here, not a Knight Brother. I sense something familiar. Lastly, number 11, Temptation. Someone was headed towards the ruins. I felt the pull of a dark, ancient energy. And next, next category, Sage Kujet. Only two entries. Number one, burial place, promising their followers power and mastery over the life wind. Kujet staged a massacre from their hidden seat on Dathomir, later known as the Tomb of Kujet. And number two, Sage Kujet's rule. This relief depicts Kujet casting their enemies into the pits below. And then the last category for Dathomir, the Wanderer and the Witch. Number one, negotiation. The Night Sister confronted the stranger and a tense negotiation took place. seeking power. Malakos wanted Merin to lead him through the ruins, but she was afraid. She knew he was after power. And lastly, number three, Merin's pact. Merin prayed to her lost sisters for forgiveness. She made a deal with Malakos and agreed to teach him their magic, but she was worried he couldn't be trusted. All right, and lastly for this video, we'll do, we'll do this planet as well, because it's only two entries. is Ordo Eris. I'm not sure what this even is, if this is a place I've visited in the game, because I can't remember. But I don't think you do visit it. Anyway, the one and only category of Ordo Eris is called the Axion. Brood, a shadowy crime syndicate that operates throughout the Outer Rim, led by the unscrupulous Sork Tormo. They control a network of gambling, slaving, and devious enterprises, particularly droid smuggling. Dealing in droid parts, 
other bounty hunters and mercenaries are known to use such stolen wares for personal cyber augmentation. And number two, Ordo Eris. Asteroid stronghold of the ruthless criminal syndicates, the Axian Brood. Located on the fringe of the outer rim, this this shadowy star base is chiseled into the remnants of a scattered planetoid decimated by ancient superweapons. A vile hive of lawless chaos, the fortress serves as a center of the Syndicate's power structure, including smuggling, gambling, and its infamous fight club. And that will be it for this video. As always, thank you very much for watching and for listening. Uh, if you like these videos, please consider leaving a like and a comment and subscribing to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.